So first of all, I'm Victor. I'm going to be talking about documentation and inclusion. So a lot of the times, I've gone through a bunch of different open source projects, from projects at Chai Hack Night to projects outside of Chai Hack Night. And there's a few things I notice. So first off, the most important thing about a project in terms of documenting it is the readme. And readmes are really important for three main reasons. They explain how the app works. They explain what the app is. And it explains how people can help. So if I'm a new person looking at your app, I look at your readme, these are the things I should see. But that's not always the case. And I'm going to point out an example from Chai Hack Night on a uh, group I worked on, and also an example of my own, so that's not like I'm blaming other people, because trust me, my example is much worse. <laughs> OK, so this is an example from a project called Tweetable that I work on. Shout out to all the fine folks at Tweetable. Um, and this was our readme kind of before um, a few months ago. Now, it has a lot of information. You can see that has uh, links over here to the work group, to our Twitter, to GitHub, all those things. But it's really hard to parse. It doesn't really read clearly. It's not well organized. So it makes it kind of challenging for a new contributor to come on and say, OK, this is what I'd like to do. This is mine. My example doesn't have any information. It says, this is a website, which you probably could have figured out anyway. And uh, that's about it. Right? You, what's the tech stack? Is this like, you know nothing about this. So how can you contribute? No idea. Like, it doesn't even have a point of reference. It doesn't even have my name on it. So this is kind of useless. Not all doom and gloom, though. So let's take a look at some good examples. So right here, this is our improved tweetable readme. We've basically trimmed it down, all links. Right? You link to our code of conduct. You link to getting started. You specify where the idea started. And you specify how you can become a contributor. So by making your readme cleaner, you're making it so people who don't have a technical background can join you. Right? Tweetable needs writers. So to make it so that people can write, that's my hint, I'm out of time. Um, so make it so that people can write and people can do their jobs without being technically minded, you need to write a good readme that represents your project. This one is from a package that is not mine um, called Bower, a really big project, big open source project. They have beautiful pictures. That's what you'll see among good readmes, big, beautiful pictures. Um, and they also have nice installation instructions, good guides on con contributing to the project, all that fun stuff. So it makes it really easy for you to join in. And it's about lowering barriers to entry. Now, I'm not going to have any examples for this section, but code documentation is also really important. If I can't read your code, I don't know how to help you. So if you have code that only you can understand, that's not an open source project. That is a project that you have closed source <laughs> that you're showing other people. Like, that's completely useless. <laughs> right? Like, Come on. That's like if you gave me engine schematics with no labels. I'd be like, I don't even know what this is. Is this a tank? It could be anything. <laughs> I, trust me, I don't know cars. Seriously. So how does this help inclusion, right? You're like, OK, you're documenting, but what's the big deal? The point is, readme's documentation are about letting people access your project without you. People shouldn't need you to work on your project, right? You don't need your project leads to be able to code. And people shouldn't have to ask you questions so that they can figure out how they can help you. So if you don't have a clear space where people can say, this is how I can contribute, you're not open source. And you know, two main points. Contributors are more comfortable if they can learn by themselves and not feel like a burden. No one wants to be that guy who's like, so how do I install this? What? And all these people are hard at work, and you're just like, where's the install instructions? Please. Right? That's not fun. No one wants to do that. You want to read through a guide, take it on your own time. And also, project leads don't feel worn down explaining basics repeatedly. You don't want to be the guy who's constantly explaining installation instructions. Trust me, I've debugged Macintosh installs. It's not fun. So finally, in conclusion, open source is not just about open code. Open source is about making an open community. It's about making sure that anyone can join your project. So if you have a need for people who are more than just developers, you need to put that in your readme. You need to put that everywhere. So really, document your code. And like it says here, it's about opening your project to anyone by removing slash lowering barriers to entry. Real open source projects are open source because the code is open, the documentation is open, and anyone can help. So who am I to tell you this? I'm Victor. I'm a software engineer who's that guy at the office who tells you, document your code. I'm the annoying guy. Um, so I do a lot of, kind of group programming. I work basically only in projects and obsess over code styling. Put your brackets on the right line. And documentation. So. That's where I come from. So document your code. Open source is opening barriers and making the world a better place. So thank you. <laughs>